the, the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength. Where? Out of Zion. Rule thou. Where? Now, this is a very important scripture because you see, most people always think that, you know, a lot of traditional Christians think, oh, this is going to happen in the millennium. There are no enemies in the millennium. The devil has already been locked up in the millennium. It's now. We are going to rule in the midst of these nations that hate us. That's what he's talking about. He says, thy people, hello, shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. If you look at some other times, it says, you know, your young men are going to spring. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about Zion City Fellowship. This move is going to be uh, um, characterized significantly by the young people. When we say young now, we're talking about 30 years old and under. It doesn't mean elderly people like us will not be there. It will be like um, 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 Joshua and Caleb. But the major, a, a, a significant number, let me see, use that word, will be young people. Now, let's go on. In the next verse, he says, The Lord has sworn. Why would God say this? And will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. God here is establishing the eternal operation of the Melchizedek priesthood. Of which Jesus is the forerunner. Jesus is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And you and I are subordinate priests under him. In this order of Melchizedek. This order of Melchizedek has a very important function. This priesthood. Because it is a double kind of priesthood. It is a priesthood and, a, and, 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 and it's a royal priesthood. In other words, they are priests and they are kings simultaneously. Now let me explain this before I read the next verse and you'll be able to appreciate it. It is this. They minister to God in the place of prayer as priests interceding and praying for men. Then they now receive words from God and with those words they now come to the earth and reign as kings. They now declare the word of the Lord that they have received in the place of prayer to enforce the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And that is why they are, that's why the word Melchizedek is God's king of righteousness. So it is a priestly and kingly ministry simultaneously. It is this Melchizedek priesthood that can do the next verse. Let us read. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings. See why they hate us? In the day of his wrath. He shall judge. I didn't hear you. Let's go back to verse 5. Read it with me. Don't be afraid to read the Bible. He said, The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. The word heathen just means nations. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. <laughs> he shall wound the heads over a few countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way, and therefore shall he lift up his head. That's symbolic of drinking the life of God. He will lift up his head. This church, this Zion church, will release a rod of strength. And that rod of strength will clash with the kings of the nations. And just like Nebuchadnezzar came against Shidrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like Belteshazzar came against the uh, desecrated the, uh, the, the, the furniture and the, and the um, utensils of the temple. So many of these kings will try and come against the church, but in doing so, they will be writing their own demise. Just like Haman, these things are going to now replay back in the earth. It is this activity 
activity, this removal, what I read at first that the Lord gave me, the removal of wicked kings and their replacement by benevolent and godly kings that will cause the nations of the earth for us to be hated of all the nations because we're going to go everywhere. There will be no nation exempt. I hope the leaders of the nations are listening. There will be no nation that will be exempt. It's going to be all nations. In some nations, you already have godly, sometimes benevolent, who are not against God. And when it comes like that, there will be some people, maybe a few people here and there, that may come against it. You know, and they will be removed and God will replace them with godly people or benevolent people. It's so not everybody's going to be a Christian. No, 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 no. No. Not everybody. Some will be later. Not all of them will become Christians overnight. But they can be benevolent. They can be cooperative. Like Cyrus. Like Darius. Even Ahasuerus. Ahasuerus was not the nicest guy on the earth. He was not. This, the king in Persia, the husband of, of Esther. He was not the nicest, he was not the nicest man on the earth. Church history tells us, you won't read this in your Bible, you know, you know they, they, he sent for Vashti. Vashti was the first wife. And asked her to come and show her beauty before all, the, all his kings and all that. We are told, I don't know, you know, because this is church history, this is not Bible, this is church history, you know, that that thing was like when a girl comes out, you know, in a beauty parade, and she, you know, like a catwalk, and she, she parade, he just wanted to show all the other guys how fine his wife was, and that none of their wives was as fine as his own. That was, the, it was just an ego trip. We are told that one of the reasons why Vashti refused, of course she was having a feast in you know, her own house, which she shouldn't have been doing, you know, was that she, did, she felt she was being degraded by being displayed before all his guests. And she was not going to do that. I'll tell you another thing about her, serious, I'm painting a picture, you know. When Esther became queen and Haman plotted the destruction of the Jews, Hasarius didn't really know what was going on because, you know, such things he doesn't even bother about. Haman was in charge of all the princes and all of that, you know. What happened between Haman and Mordecai was private between them. What Haman decided to do was private to Haman. He didn't even tell the king. He had such power that he could have even killed he could have killed Mordecai alone. The, the, Hasarius would not even have heard about it. That's the kind of power he had. But God, knowing his pride, knowing the kind of man he was, he, it was, he decided it in himself. Oh my God, turn to your neighbor and say, God rules in the affairs of men. You don't even know when your thoughts are being controlled by God. Without violating your own free will. It was his own decision. He said, it is not good to kill him alone. I'm going to kill the entire tribe. All the Hebrews. It was a decision he made in his heart. And God said, very good. <laughs> you enter my trap. Mm. So you know what he did? Instead of, it would be so easy. Would you just take have taken Mordecai and killed him? Pride will blind you. You know what he did? He went to consult with demonic powers. He cast lots. In the Yoruba, some will say, Oh Lord, we share. In our, you know, people, <laughs> of course, I don't recommend this. <laughs> you know, they go to a witch doctor. The witch doctor will, you know, and try and look for a time that is good for whatever it is they want to do. So that's what he did. He cast lots. And then he chose a particular day. That he felt, yes, the gods will protect me on that day. And we will kill all these people. And then sent a decree out. Then he went to Haaserios. 
Is that telling her serious the whole truth? All he just told her serious is that there are some very troublesome people inside the empire. They don't like to pay tax. You know, they they they're very proud. They say they cannot they serve any other god. And I just want to take care of them so that we can get money from the people who kill them, and it will it will you know reimburse the it will be sent to the treasury of the king. Asiris didn't even investigate. I'm painting a picture. And Sarah said, fine. Go ahead, do it. So the decree was written, stamped, with the authority of the king, sent all over the empire. That was when Mordecai heard. When Mordecai heard, we know the story, Mordecai cried, prayed, you know, then he went to Esther. Esther, then Esther said something to show you the character of this man. Mordecai said, you've been brought to the kingdom for such a time. This is the time you have to open your mouth though. I may be talking to some Mordecai's now. I may be talking to some Esther's now. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. So he, he, said, he said, go and tell the king what is happening. For you know whether you have been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. Esther didn't want to go. Esther said, hmm, you don't know this man. I'm paraphrasing. You don't know him. If you go and he has not called for you, he will kill you. Can you imagine such a man who will kill his own wife simply because she came without permission? I'm painting a picture. Her serious was not an angel. But with prayer, you can change a wicked man to become a benevolent man. That's what happened to her, serious. So, um, uh, Mordecai comes back to her and says, don't think you are going to be saved. Though. You, better, you better do something about this. So she understood, she said, look, okay, you pray, I will pray, we will fast. You know, and when it's three days, I will go in to meet him. If I perish, I perish. There is nobody who has ever said, if I perish, I perish that has perished. You will never perish. But you must not be afraid to perish. <laughs> As, this is what is ahead of the church. And so, you find Esther goes before um, um, Arserios. The same Arserios. Let's see, he has the same person. He stretches forth the scepter. Says, Come. I haven't seen you for a long time. She had, because he's the one who calls for his wives. You know, after 30 days, he had, 30 days for one month, he hasn't called for her. You know, say, Come, 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 Esther, come. Ah, good to see you. Uh, this is the Olubi's translation. You know, good to see you. You're looking good, baby. <laughs> you know, what, what, what do you want? Anything you want up to the half of my kingdom. Just tell me. What happened? God had moved on our serious through the prayers of Mordecai and Esther. Give the Lord a clap offer it. <laughs> this same Aserius. This same Aserius. Esther tells him, I want you to do a banquet. Call Haman. I'm going to fast track. He, Esther exposes Haman and his plot to kill the Jews to this same Arsarius. Arsarius is angry with Haman and hangs Haman on the very gallows he had prepared for Mordecai. But that, the story doesn't end there. Then he now says, let the Jews serve their God. He now makes a, a... He said, the decree I've made cannot be changed. Because in the law of the Medes and the Persians, they can't change that. But I'm going to give another decree. He said, you and Esther, write what you like. Write what you like. And give the Jews the authority to defend themselves. When those people try and come and kill them. And gave them the resources. He took the house of Haman and gave it to Mordecai. 
Then Mordecai, uh, after Esther told him Mordecai was his uncle, he now put Mordecai in the position of Haman. It was now Mordecai that ruled the empire. But I'm not done yet without firing a shot. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Without firing a shot, so shall it be in our day. We're not going to go to countries and start shooting kings. We don't do that. We just pray. Ask Abacha. We just pray. God will shuffle them like you shuffle cards. Rule in the midst of thine enemies. The rod of thy strength out of Zion. Psalm 105. Am I helping anybody here? This is about Joseph, but there is a prophetic application to us today. The Bible tells us, we know Joseph's story, and I will not go back into all of that. You know, how he interpreted Pharaoh's dream. Pharaoh now exalted him to become the leader, the, the, the ruler in Egypt. Pharaoh was only higher than him in the, in, in the throne. But he said his word, he says, at thy word, my people shall be ruled. Again, Pharaoh, this, there were two Pharaohs. There was the Pharaoh of Moses, who was wicked. And there was the Pharaoh of Joseph, who was benevolent. This Pharaoh was not like his grand great grandson or whatever you know i don't know how many generations you know that killed the children and all that this was the pharaoh at the time of joseph i find this particular pharaoh had a heart for god you know how i know joseph tells him the interpretation of the dream and says going to be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine neither had come to pass the years of plenty hadn't come the years of famine hadn't come. How did Pharaoh know it was true? So much so that he gave his kingdom to a stranger. He had the, he had the witness in his spirit. Once he heard, he said, Ah, this is God. This is God. This is God. And instantly, he gave Joseph the authority and everything. Now, I don't want to get off my message. Look at verse... Verse, verse, uh, uh, verse 20. 105. And the king sent... I didn't hear you. And loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. Watch this. And made him... And made him... He made him Lord of his house and ruler over all his substance. Now this verse 22 is the one that applies to us prophetically today. To do what? Bind his princes. What? And teach his senators. That's why they will hate us. Nobody wants to be bound. The end time church, this man-child church, will have Josephs. And these bad governments and bad leaders, he will bind the princes at his pleasure. And he will teach his senators wisdom. And they won't like it. Then we see the next scripture. Psalm 2. That's why you need revelation and anointing. See, it's truth, but it's scattered all over. But what I'm doing now is by the help of the Holy Spirit, I'm giving you the picture of what God is doing. Why do the heathen rage? The word heathen again is nations. And the people imagine 
a vain thing. The kings of the earth. The what? The, the what? See? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against what? The Lord and his, you and I. Let us do what? Break their what? Bands asunder. This Joseph that has been binding us at his pleasure. We're going to break his bands. Or they will try to. And cast away. I didn't hear you. Their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. <laughs> and the Lord shall have them in what? Derision. He shall speak to them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure watch the next statement yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion this church this man child this perfect glorious church that sits in Zion God will say you kings you want to fight them <laughs> I've set my king upon my holy hill in Zion here they are now the rulers of the earth not you next verse I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me thou art my son this day have I begotten thee Remember what Pastor Andrew and the dim lady were singing? You know, Jesus was the first born to ever be born again, but your number is there. So this statement is not only for Jesus, also for you. This day, this third day, this day, turn to your neighbor, say this day, oh, this third day, God has begotten me into perfection. Give the Lord a clap of praise. Hallelujah. I want to tell you one thing. I, it's scripture you should know. Everything that applies to Jesus applies to you. Because you are a joint heir with him. Very important truth. There's a scripture in Psalm 40. It says in the volume of the book it is written of me. So of you. Do you know that everything about your life is written in the volume of the book? The Bible says in Revelation chapter 22. In the volume of the book. Just as it's written of Jesus. It's also written of you. That's why you need to read your Bible every day to find out your prophetic destiny and walk in it. On the Air has been brought to you by Christ Life Ministries, the outreach arm of the Scripture Pastor Christian Center. You can be a part of this program by becoming a faith partner with Christ Life Ministries. For details, contact Christ Life Ministries, number 12, Oshutoku Avenue, Bodija Ibadan. You can also download our weekly messages from our website, www.spcconline.org, while our email address is scripturepastor at spcconline.org. You're welcome to worship with us at the Scripture Pastor Christian Center Auditorium, Polytechnic Road, Sango Ibadan. God bless you.